Welcome back, Shaliners, and Happy New Year. 2019 is closing. Today's the last day. And in fact, you might be watching this on New Year's Day where it's already next year. I'm broadcasting into the future. I can't believe that it's 2019. Like I literally said the other day, it's like, yeah, next year's 2010. I was like, oh my God, what? How am I still so surprised at how the passage of time works? And yet I am. But it's a time of reflection, resetting, renewal, Rihanna. That's right. 2020 is going to be our year to level up, savage up, go after we want. But before we can do that, we got to make a plan. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to execute your New Year's resolutions, revamp your life in 2020, and what I personally want to leave behind. And these are all scientifically proven ways of achieving goals. So this isn't just like, I don't know, be yourself, make a magnet, and put it on your fridge. No, girl, we're breaking it down. But first, just want to remind you to follow me on social media at ShallonXO. And starting in the next few days, I will be accepting questions once again on my website, ShallonLesser.com. Just head over there and click Get Help. You can also shop some super fun merch and take some quizzes to see how your social media stacks up and what kind of vibe it's putting out. And be sure to check out my podcast, Girl on Top, out every Wednesday, every place podcasts are found. So goal setting is super important to me. And we have done videos here on manifestation, vision boarding, all that kind of stuff, because I... I've said before that like manifestation and positive visualization really is the key to my success. Reading the book, The Secret, is truly the foundation of everything I have achieved in my life because I operate by the principle, ask, believe, receive. And this has been a huge year for me. Like, you know how sometimes you think like when you're thinking about yourself in the future, it's like, oh, by next year, I'm gonna be so rich and so thin and my life's gonna be 100% different. Maybe I'll live on a houseboat in Spain. And then a year elapses and you're like, exactly the same. I'm, I'm exactly the same. This year, things are not the same. I suffered loss. I lost my grandmother. I lost my boyfriend. I lost my job in January, almost a year ago, but I gained so much. I did not gain another grandmother. That's unfortunate. Did not get another boyfriend, but that's okay. I gained this career of mine, and I also gained so much knowledge about myself. And it's been a tumultuous year and there's been wins and there's been losses, like professionally and personally. And my mom said the other day, she's like, you know, when I was starting out in medicine, I just like getting through each day was like insurmountable. And I would just be like, oh, like wrecked at the end of the week. So instead of trying to focus on like, I'm so positive and this is so great. She's like, I simply focused on what I was learning. And I made a list of every single thing I had learned that day or I had learned that week. And so then I was able to shift from like, this is so stressful, I'm overwhelmed to, this is all learning. This is all data. And so that's how I've thought of this year. This is a big learning curve. Like I've learned, I mean, in, a, in so many ways. But learning is the foundation for growth, right? Because when you guys talk about like, I can't get over this guy, I can't get over this job, I can't get over this anything, that's because you're not learning. And we have to do an autopsy of our situations, good and bad, to understand how we contributed, what we can do differently next time, and then we can turn an event that is painful into growth. Because growth can be painful. Growing pains. Hello? That's why that term exists. Because if we don't learn from something, we just get caught in this loop. I, I hurt. I can't get over it. He hurt my feelings. I lost something. And it's not fun. And we stay stuck. Okay? We can't change what happened. We can change what it meant. So here's how we're going to set some goals. Okay? I'll tell you what my goals are. I would love to say that I don't have that same basic bitch goal of losing 10 pounds, but literally it's the thing that I want the most. I feel like in this last year, I've got my career where I wanted it. I've got my finances where I wanted it. I feel like I have a vision for my career. And now I want my body where I want it. And I'm wearing this outfit on purpose because to me, this dopey sweater with these dopey ass B appliques from H&M is emblematic of everything that I need to change. Did you guys ever see the SNL skit called Fashion Coward? Look it up. But it's basically like, like dumpy, um, scared women going into like what seems to be like an Ann Taylor, but all the stuff is like gray hoodies over here, two big sweatpants over there. And I'm like, oh my God, this is me. This is me. I'm the fashion coward. 
and I'm the fashion coward and I dress in like drapey fabrics and these moo moo tops. You guys have called me out on because I don't feel like my body is where I want it to be in order to wear what I want. And so that's one of my goals. Get my fitness in shape. And my best friend has lost 25 pounds. She's ripped up. I hate her for it. I mean, I don't. Like, I'm so proud of her. But I'm just like, oh, wow. And now we have a physical manifestation of what you should be doing. It's not just existing in this esoteric thing where you're like, okay, well, none, none of us are in great shape. That's not true. So this is a huge thing. Another big thing I want, and all of these walk hand in hand, is boundaries boundaries. I spoke about this in the winter glow up video, but it bears repeating, not just for you, for me as well. Now that I work for myself, I see time and energy as currency, the same way I view money. Time literally is money to me. And there is a tipping point where this can be very bad when you work for yourself, because then it's like, if time is money, and you can quantify everything, You don't. there is no time off, there's no vacation, because the vacation means you're losing money, you're not producing. But then you have to reframe it and be like, okay, vacation is an investment in further productivity, because I really need to rest and reset and relax. Like when I was just in Jamaica, I, when I went there, I was like, this isn't even gonna help, I don't even wanna be here, I need to be home working. But when I got there, I was like, <sighs> And it was really important for me to have that like gushy few days where I just relaxed because then I came back and I'm like, boom, back to Vlogmas. We're doing it. We're crushing the rest of 2019. But I wasn't going to be able to do that. I was going to burn out. But when I say energy is currency, what does that mean? It means that everything has a price. We just can't see it. We can see it on physical items. We can see it on this dopey ass sweater. We can see it on these <laughs> fake flameless candles. But do we see it as clearly on an interaction with someone who drains us? With a boy who is wasting our time and not furthering our goals of having a real relationship, having children, moving out of the city, whatever it is. Are we seeing that price tag on the food that we're eating and what it's doing to our bodies in the long run? Maybe not. And this is my goal is to see the price tag on everything, right? Going forward, I don't just see it on physical items, I see it on individuals, I see it on dynamics, and I see it on my own behaviors. Why? Because I need to be on a budget. Ironically, I don't need to be on a financial budget as much anymore, but I think, I don't think that's ironic because once you have that kind of taken care of, you're like, wait a minute, now I see what currency is, and it isn't just money, it isn't just a credit card, it is interactions, it is something that is taken from me, that I am giving to others, that I am spending, right, I'm spending effort. I'm spending my love. I'm spending my time. And you can't make more time. You can make more money. You can't get that time back. So the price tag on that better be worth it. And sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. But we have to look around and really do an inventory. You know, pick up the bottom of that thing and look at it like we do when we're shopping. It's like, oh, this is a cute candle. $38? No, thank you. We're going to pick up all of our interactions and we're going to look in the bottom of it. What is this costing me? What is this costing me? Because time is not the only currency. Another currency is happiness. It's fucking happiness. Maybe you only have to spend 15 minutes hanging out with that cousin who makes you insane, but how long does that unhappy feeling last? Once she leaves, are you like twisting, going, 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 over and over and over again? Tick tock, tick tock. That price keeps going up, right? Now the price tag is mobile, it's moving. So this, this is part of my goal, is to streamline my emotional spending, okay? And that way, I can have fewer, better things. This is my goal with my physical stuff. Like, I don't want to buy the stupid ass sweater because it was $29, who cares? I care. I would rather not buy three $30 sweaters and buy one nicer sweater, you know? And the same with my interactions. I would rather stay home for three days and then go to one awesome dinner with my friends rather than like, I'm going to force myself to go to this event. I don't really want to go. I'm going to run around all day do all this bullshit. I'm going to be on the phone with people I don't like. No, we're spending. And speaking of spending, my next goal is valuation. And I want this to be, I, I'm not just telling you this to like, bleh, like hear myself talk because my goals need to be all of your goals because none of us have an unlimited amount of time, money, or emotional currency, right? It feels a lot better when you have those boundaries in place and you're spending purposefully, purposefully. You don't feel like you're being robbed of your time, of your emotion, of your energy. 
You are giving it and you're getting a good return on investment, just like money, right? So my next thing is valuation. I have a very difficult time placing a money value on what I do for a living. And you might not think that if you're buying my questions, but that was a big hurdle for me to overcome because people would say, why should I have to pay for your advice? Well, then why do you want it? If you think it has no value, then why are you asking me, right? So people will gaslight you on the macro about what it is your skill set is going to do. I want more brand partnerships. I want more sponsorships. And it's hard for me to put a dollar value on that. Like, oh, I can't ask these things. No, who's gonna take me seriously as an, as an influencer, as a YouTube creator? Bitch, maybe a quarter million motherfucking people. Maybe that, we hit a quarter milli. Isn't that crazy? A year ago, I had 45,000. And now I have 251,000 Shaliners. I have 251,000 best friends. <laughs> Please be my friends. But that valuation, is difficult for me. Why? Mm, we're going to get deep here because my father never paid my mother child support. So I had a parent who placed my dollar value at zero. A parent, not a boss who I wouldn't remember in five years, not a coworker, not a glass door survey, a parent who said, you don't have value. So if my parent thought I didn't have a dollar value, how on earth could I have the audacity to value myself. But see, knowing that was something I resisted for a very long time. And so I had issues with money for a very long time, issues with spending, issues with saving, because when, when we have that resistance, that pushback, Freud said that the reason we do that is to protect ourselves from bad memories and bad realizations. And man, ain't that the truth. When we see a pattern coming up again and again and again, it's that psychological splinter I talk about all the time. And splinters digging out of splinters, like, no, don't touch it. No, don't touch it. Just leave it. Ah, I can't bear it. Okay, you're not going to get it amputated. It's going to hurt for a minute. And then you're going you're gonna to still hurt, but in service of something better in service of healing. You leave it in there. Oh, it's going to hurt as it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's going to, it's going to do it the hard way instead of the easy way. And the same is true with our psyche. So once I was able to get to that true psychological root, when I see myself wanting to do something stupid financially or not value myself or like, I'm not going to reach out to that brand. Blah, I'm like, you know what? This is the demon brain talking. This is the splinter brain talking. This isn't the me talking. This isn't the Shallon who knows herself, who likes herself, who values herself because she has so many great friends and they like me too. So, I mean, I must be doing something. I can't be totally unlovable. Who has a wonderful mom, wonderful rest of her family. This is the splinter brain saying, you're not worth anything. I'm pulling that shit out. And just to get that split second of distance from the, the thought and the thinker, that's what my therapist calls it, the thought versus the thinker. I am the thinker, the thought is the splinter brain. Just to get that moment of like clarity, it's like, oh, I know what you're doing. No, thank you. Thank you, splinter brain, for the suggestion. It's stupid and I'm not going to take it. So try again tomorrow, bye. And then you feel what? Powerful. You are what? Spending your currency purposefully right? You're spending your thoughts. You're now spending your decision makings in a way that is powerful and purposeful and proactive instead of reactive. So now that we got a little bit of foundation, let's talk about how to execute these New Year's resolutions. Because I feel like there's been this backlash this year. It's like, fuck New Year's resolutions. You don't have to start over in January. Okay, then don't. Then don't, Vanessa, with your weird turf bangs and your septum piercing. I don't care. Go be mad on the internet. It doesn't matter. I want to start over. It's a good time. Why not? Why not? We should have 10 new years. Like every month, it's like, it's, it's new month. Are you making your resolutions? It's new month, girl. It's a good time to pull back, reset. The holidays are over. It's fine. If you're that bitch in the gym on January 1st, do it. It's more than a lot of people are doing. So point number one, when we're looking at resolutions and we're looking to make a change in our life, we have to accept a truth. All change is loss. All change is loss. What does that mean? All change is loss means that you are going to be leaving behind certain things. Maybe those are people. Maybe that is just your status quo and your comfort zone and you got to branch out. And with that comes a feeling of sadness, 
of terror. I mean, things are changing and uh, ugh. humans don't do well with change. People who say they love change, they're they're chaotic and that's not always there's usually a big downside to that to that pathology. It's normal and it's healthy to be afraid of change. We don't know what the unknown is going to bring us. It's a survival mechanism. But you have to focus on the upside. The upside of that fear, the upside of any fear is exhilaration. Now, the upside of someone pointing a gun in your face is not like a positive exhilaration, but the upside of being on a roller coaster is. So we have to look at this as roller coaster fear, not mugging fear, okay? Not like bodega robbery fear. So look at what you're going to lose. And then the key to achieving these goals is to pre-mourn. That's why I call it. Pre-mourn what you're going to lose. For me, what I want to lose is 10 motherfucking pounds, okay? That's what I want. I want to be able to wear what I want, pose how I want, look good, not suck in a thing, and just feel happy in my body. It's not for guys. It's not to be single. I can catch a dick whenever I want, okay? In the words of Amy Schumer, she's like, I'm 168 and I can catch a dick whenever I want. And I was like, wow. Oh, good girl. Might not be the dick I want, but good for her. So... When I think about, okay, I want to lose weight and I want to get my body right. It's like, okay, well, I can't eat the foods I want. Ooh, it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. It means socially, I'm not going to be as fun. Mm, I'm going to be the heavy being like, I don't want dessert. Or I'm going to be at dinner when the bread basket comes. And I'm like, ah, and I have to have that self-control. That's outside of my comfort zone. That's fear. That's effort. That's effort. And when do we not do well with expending effort? When we're already tired. There it is, coming back to that streamlining, right? Coming back to that energy streamlining, just like money. When do we not do well with spending? When we're already broke. And so if you are energy broke, if you are happiness broke, you're gonna see that bread basket and be like, come to mama, I don't care, I, I don't care. Just like when you're broke, it's a stressful situation. But if you have kept those boundaries and those borders where they should be, you're gonna have that reserve. You're gonna have already the self-control to be like, you know what? I said I'm not getting on the phone with that weird person I wanna talk to. I left that date before I had another drink because he was a weirdo. I have the self-control to resist that breadbasket. And these are gonna be micro calculations. They're not gonna be something you like sit and analyze with a piece of paper on a murder board. This is gonna happen automatically because you're gonna be used to it. You're gonna be in the habit. Habits like that, like the eating, the whatever, they're made up of other habits, but we'll get to that in a minute. So anticipate the loss. Okay, I'm gonna be not so fun at dinner. Um, I'm gonna be walking by my favorite bakery in my neighborhood and I'm gonna smell it and I'm gonna have to be like, Ugh. I'm gonna have to keep walking. I'm gonna have to get up early and go to Orange Theory because that's what's gonna help me stay motivated and on track for the rest of the day and do what I need to do for my body. And then sit with that and work through those emotions. Ugh, the alarm's going off. I don't want to get up. I don't want to. I don't want to. Would you want to keep feeling like this? No, I don't. How are you going to feel after you get up and work out? I'm going to feel proud of myself. Okay, let's think about that prideful feeling. Oh, that feels good. Okay, so now tomorrow when the alarm really does go off, I'm already going to have worked through all this stuff and I'm going to go straight to that pride feeling. So we anticipate, we pre-mourn, and then when the scenario actually hits, we're ready to go. We got a plan, right? You also have to look at what we call secondary gains. Secondary gains are the, the emotional payout you get from staying stuck in situations that don't actually serve you. I mean, this is the thing though, they do serve you. I get messages from you guys like, I'm in a relationship, he's a douchebag, he doesn't have a job, he talks down to me, he flirts with other girls, he's on Tinder, blah, 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 blah. And what do I always say to you? What do I say? We know what's wrong with him. What is wrong with you? What are you getting out of this that makes this okay? What are you telling yourself to keep yourself in this situation? Because you are telling yourself something. We stay in a situation for a reason because it works. Me with the weight, I have been trying to get to this. It's like, why am I doing this to myself? Maybe because if I'm at my ideal weight, then I have nothing to complain about and my life isn't completely perfect. Then what? Then maybe this is simply as good as life gets. And it doesn't feel like a cocaine high. It feels, feels normal. It's happy cocaine high moments, but no, you're not gonna feel like that 24 hours a day. Maybe I feel unworthy. Maybe this goes back to the splinter brain with my father. I'm not worthy of looking good. I, I can't have, that's for other people. I can only have a finite amount of goodness. It, there's something, but you have to look at that and explore these secondary gains in your mind with a sense of curiosity rather than judgment. It's like, okay, okay. You know, you're gonna hear what like your brain tells itself 
but then like go a little deeper you're gonna get to the surface level. it's like well i'm keeping myself out because i don't want to work out no but why don't you you feel good after it's good for you it's socially good you got you know ever i'm working out like that's there's a social benefit to it but what's what's underneath that and then sit with that for a minute okay what's underneath that keep going until you get to some place and then you're going to see a pattern start to emerge right and then you're going to have more of that power and that mastery number three this is important picture yourself achieving the goal i think one thing that we don't talk about as much is the sadness of achievement achieving a goal in my life has never felt the way i thought it would feel just the way like sleeping with a guy i've been after is never as good. It's the anticipation and it's the remembrance. It's the hunt and it's the leftovers, right? But like the actual achievement is like, okay. And I have a big problem with celebrating things. Like you wouldn't think that because I'm so selfish, but like I, that's why I force myself to have a party when I hit 200,000. And like, I'm gonna force myself to keep having these celebrations because I'm very much like, okay, we hit it. Like what's next? What's next? What are we doing next? Like we can't, we can't rest here. And it's like, that's your whole life passing you by. But it's because I like the hunt. I like the achievement. I like the climb. So picture yourself achieving your goal. How do you feel? Do you feel happy? Do you feel anxious? Why? Why do you feel anxious? I picture myself being my ideal weight, right? I feel, I feel proud of myself. I feel comfortable and I feel confident. But there's an element of anxiety. Why? Hmm. Well... Like I said, maybe my life isn't perfect and I can't use this as an excuse anymore, you know? Maybe I don't have a coping mechanism in mind when food is my coping mechanism. I'm sad, I'm upset, I'm bored, I'm lonely, I'm gonna reach for the candy. Hmm, but if I've taken that away, what have I replaced it with? Nothing? Then how am I coping with things? Do I have a healthy emotional fidget spinner? I don't know. So this is, again, the anticipation of the problems because now you're going to have a plan. Also, when you think about how you feel when you achieve this goal, I want you to be realistic because there's no point in chasing a goal if you have absolutely no idea why. Look at this. It's like, I want a boyfriend. I want a boyfriend. Okay, you have a boyfriend. Now, maybe you don't feel anxious at all. Maybe you feel like, like incandescently happy. That tells me this is not a goal, this is a getaway car. You want this goal because you need saving from something. I can't know what that is, only you can know. But I have some ideas. Boredom, loneliness, and look, no one likes to be lonely, but an inability to be alone with yourself. That points to unresolved trauma. Like a lack of knowing yourself, and more importantly, a lack of liking yourself. I don't want to be alone with my thoughts. My thoughts are crazy. They take me to a dark place. You don't have a lot of self-control. It's about mastering those thoughts. We all can spiral into madness, okay? Is it, I don't know what to do with my career, and so it seems kind of easier to get a boyfriend than to get like a law degree. I don't want to deal with my parents, and so because I feel incapable of crafting a healthy relationship with my family, a boyfriend is just going to take me away from that. I'm just going to be climbing out my window, you know, every Saturday night and getting away from my mom or whatever. What do you think I'm about to say? Psychological splinter? Mm. Address that getaway car. Look at what it's running from, okay? Because then, if not, you're going to chase this goal. Say you get a boyfriend. All that shit's still going to be there, girl. It's still going to be there. It's going to be such a better use of your resources and your spending to focus on what it is you're trying to get away from in the first place, right? No, it's not easy. No, it's not particularly fun, but it is the work. It is truly the only work that matters. It's our life's work. Now, number four, we're gonna break it down. We're gonna break down big things into small things. This is where it gets literal. Any big goal is comprised of small tasks. If you just graduated from college, like you, you, you were afraid of going away to college, but not because you didn't understand how you were going to graduate. You were afraid of like the social pressures. Am I going to like my major? What am I going to be when I grow up? But you weren't afraid. It's like, I don't know. I'm just going to walk around the campus and wander into some building. I, no, you knew what was going to happen because there was a plan. There was a conscripted plan that people have been following for hundreds of years on how to get a degree. So you weren't worried about that. 
Same with learning to drive. You weren't like, I'm going to get in this car and just mash my hand on this dashboard. I don't know. No, you were going to go to driving school. You're going to read the manuals. But when we, when we get to be an adult, it's like, I'm going to become a YouTuber by mashing my hand on the key. I, I have no idea. It's difficult, right? And if you don't know where to begin, you begin with that streamlining. You begin with like, okay. I am, even if I don't know what else to do, I know I'm going to have my time, my money, my energy, my resources perfectly lined up so that when opportunities do come along, I can slot them right in. I've already crafted a life that is conducive to this, right? I am a big believer in calendars. Yes, this is a Shawn Mendes calendar, damn it. I make one for myself, like I custom make it every year, like a psychopath on Shutterfly because yeah it's like we all have a calendar in our phone and it's like that's what I rely on to tell me like what I have going on but I need to have this hanging up on my fridge you see I literally make it I custom make it with the phone I'm the saddest person in America <laughs> I've always thought that like you know I'm a good manifester and I remember one of you guys posted on my Instagram how I was talking about like it's like Harry Styles one day like I'm coming for you and this was like five years ago or a long time ago and then juxtaposing like me telling my Harry Styles story and they're like, Shallon's a manifester. Can you imagine if I actually manifested Shawn Mendes into my life? I would have to delete this channel. I would have, like full stop the whole channel. Like I couldn't even go through. I'd have to delete my Instagram. I would have to change my name. <laughs> so you got one look at this. It's like, I'm just gonna get on the phone and get a restraining order. Anyway, I like writing things down. And if I go to the gym, so I have a two part thing that I do. If I go to the gym and I eat healthy, I get an X on that day. If I do one, I just get the slash. So it's like one is the gym, one is the healthy eating, and I wanna see a calendar full of Xs. It helps me track my progress, right? Because when I can see something visually, I can do other things visually. One thing we talk about is a gratitude journal. Gratitude turns what you have into enough, right? Because I know, I know. We are lacking in so many areas and this is this is just the reality. You live in a crappy small town in a crappy small apartment. You drive a crappy small car. You work in a crappy small job. But gratitude will help you cultivate this, this internal engine of prosperity. If you look around my house, I have vision boards everywhere. I have phrases. I have an abundance. Blessings are chasing me down. I have a tweet from Gucci Mane that I needle pointed. Blessings are chasing me down. New levels, new opportunities are in my future, like it's, it's a whole thing. I look at it every single day, it's by my bed. Because I wanna live inside a self-help book and I need help cultivating that mindset at all times. So, this is number five. Keep a journal of your progress. And I don't just mean like today I went to the gym today, I stuck to keto diet, cool story. Keep a journal of how you feel because how you feel is not necessarily going to be expected. You're gonna be like, I worked out, I felt actually terrible about myself. I felt ashamed. I felt disgusted that I've let myself get to this point, And I felt like overwhelmed. That's fine. Approach those feelings with curiosity and not judgment and acknowledge that they're like a cloud in the sky. They're gonna drift in and they're gonna drift out again, right? And then the next day be like, okay, I gave a name to how I was feeling yesterday. I mourned it. I felt it. I pulled that splinter out. Now we're back at orange theory. Now we're back working out. And now I don't feel that anymore because I processed it. And now I'm proud of myself because I'm back here at the gym. I'm back here eating keto. I'm just cooking up my meat 24 hours a day. Meat, 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 meat and cheese, charcuterie. So examine how you're feeling and understand that achievement is almost like grief. It's non-linear because you are grieving. Why? <gasps> Change is loss. God, when I tie it all back together, I am good at this. <laughs> Should humility be one of my goals for 2020? No. No. If you think I'm going to get more humble as this chip, no. I will get more philanthropic though, so I feel like that'll balance out my own hubris. So in sum, number six, you look at the problem and then you look at the solution, okay? You're going to break it down right? You're going to break down micro into macro and do as much as you can do. One thing therapists do is like they start with something big and they like test your freak out meter and then they boop, 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 boop. They boil it down to something you can get your head around. And this is how I manifest. This is my thing with manifestation. It's like, 
okay, a year ago to say like, Shallon's going to be a professional YouTuber um, by March. And I was like, no, no, I'm not. But it's like, okay, well, Shallon's going to be making $500 a month off YouTube by August. And I was like, okay, I can get my head around that. Even, and now there's a, there's a movement to be like, dream big, dream huge. That, of course, you should, but only if you can connect to it because that's the key. You have to be able to plug into it. Sorry, I'm making the sex finger. I, I don't know why I'm doing sex fingers. But if you can't plug into it, if you can't truly feel the possibility of that happening, feel what it's going to be like when you achieve it, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, right? You have to make it, it's this fine line between too small and too big in the sweet spot of belief. And wherever your sweet spot of belief is, that's fine. If it really is small, it's like, no, I can't picture myself running the New York Marathon in November, but I can picture myself walking on the treadmill three days a week. Great. You connect to that, you feel it, it becomes real in your mind before it becomes real in practice because it all has to start in our mind. So then you're going down to the gym tomorrow, you're walking on the treadmill. My therapist, he's like, to get back into working out, he's like, just go in and like touch the machines, you know? Just walk out, hello, name this machine, that's Gordon. All right, that's Diana, the leg press. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Whatever, make it small. Because he's like, can you picture yourself running for an hour? I was like, no, like I'd be in the ER. He's like, can you picture yourself running for 10 minutes? I was like, okay. He's like, how about seven? Can you start with seven minutes? I was like, I can do seven minutes on the treadmill. He's like, then tomorrow you're doing seven minutes on the treadmill. I was like, okay. And see, it didn't seem overwhelming because loss is overwhelming. So we have to try to minimize it. And it's, we're in a lucky position because a lot of loss in life, you can't minimize. You can't minimize death. You can't take death step by step. You can't take a job loss step by step or a war or, you know, a, a sickness or whatever it is. So when we have the opportunity to parcel down our anxiety, we got to do it. Because ironically, leaning into that and facing it, doing that pre-morning and therefore that streamlining of our decision making and our energy spending is exactly what's going to get us to the next level. Renew, revamp, re-up, Rihanna. I feel like I should add in every video with her name. It's like an incantation. Rihanna. I want to hear your goals for 2020. And if you guys... You guys should start a group. There is a Shell Literature. And yes, we are going to get to Shell Literature. We're going to do our book club. Don't worry. I just feel like there's been so much going on. We have Retro Bay Week. We have celebrities wiling out. So don't worry. Book club is coming. But there is a Shell Literature WhatsApp group. I'm going to put the link right down here in the bio. You can join that. Please don't fight. There's been... Just don't fight. <laughs> don't fight. Fight the whole rest of the world. Fight Selena Gomez fans. Join one of their groups and just go, go in like windmilling around. Just mayhem. But other than that, I want to hear what your goals are for this new year, how you plan to achieve them, and most importantly, how you've achieved goals in the past. Like, we have all achieved so fucking much. So before you make resolutions, make a list of everything you've learned in this year and everything you've achieved. That's how my mom always made me do my resolutions when I was a kid. Like, first of all, we're going to start with everything we did because then that's going to inform how we make our resolutions because we're not going to be like, I'm never going to do it. Girl, of course you will. Look at all that you've already done. Like I said, follow me on social media at ShallonXO on Instagram and listen to my podcast, Girl on Top, out every Wednesday. It's going to be a great year, Shallon. I can feel it. Mm-hmm. <laughs>